They are all the rage now, helping you find your family's history. We've always wondered about the validity of my dad's side of the family and their claims about where we're from. Elizabeth Makos is as curious as we all are. So we think that we are half Italian, quarter Czechoslovakian, and quarter Polish. She agreed to help us put these tests to the test. I am. I'm very excited about this. Elizabeth gave saliva samples three times, one for Ancestry DNA, 23andMe, and My Heritage. We sealed them all up and sent them off. Then we had to wait about six weeks. So we got your results back. Mm -hmm. What do you think of them? It's, it's shocking. It's really shocking. I can't imagine what technology they employ to get these results. It's shocking because her results are all over the place. When it comes to Eastern Europe, Ancestry said she was 49% Eastern European, but 23andMe and MyHeritage only put the percentage in the high 20s. When we look at, for example, it says the, the Balkans here, one says 34%, one says 18%. Yeah. <laughs> A little, a little bit of a discrepancy there. Remember how Elizabeth thought for sure that she was 50% Italian? Well, 23andMe and my heritage say she's closer to 30%. And then look at this result. North African, what do you make of that? I, do. <laughs> I would love to know. The companies don't claim to be perfectly accurate, and they use different algorithms. My Heritage told us in a Skype interview that it maps more parts of the globe than other companies. My Heritage DNA has 42 ethnic regions with percentages, um, and that's the most on the market. Rafi Mendelssohn encourages you to read the fine print, including what companies might do with your DNA profile after testing. Personal information provided to MyHeritage is never sold, licensed, or shared with any third parties. Both Ancestry DNA and 23andMe say your DNA could be used for medical research by its partners if your name has been stripped out. Peter Pitts is a former FDA associate commissioner, and he says, watch out. The companies will tell you that they may sell the information, but it'll be uh, de-identified, that nobody can find you. And that's not true. There have been studies done, one at Harvard, for example, where a couple of professors got genetic information that was supposedly anonymous and was able to figure out who the people were through very easy mechanisms. He says the results should not be taken as gospel, and companies say don't use the findings to make medical decisions. People need to understand that what they're getting back is an interesting snapshot, but not necessarily, not necessarily accurate or clinically relevant. Elizabeth says she's telling her friends to use the tests just for fun.